Hey, back again with another tutorial on Photoshop. Um, no camera today again. I am just in the office by myself working on some projects. So here I am going to uh, switch over to my workflow and I'm actually gonna turn on all of my stuff that you need. Oh, let me turn on my input layer as well. Uh, so you can see what it's my input overlay. So this will give you there we go. So now you can see my uh, screen, my keystrokes. There we go. So actually, let me turn on this. Okay. So I am going to right now. I'm going to let me see. I need to go into. I need to copy the text first and foremost. And actually, let me go, let me show you what I did and show you the image size, which is, uh, that's control alt and I image size is always going to be 1200 by 1500 for Instagram only because the square model does work, but it does seem to be a little better if you do, um, uh, uh, an elongated four by five post, it does seem to just look better one thing I want to key in on here is this should always be 300 dpi instead of 72 dpi and I want to put this back to 1200 by 1500 this is basically a 4 by 5 inch design so that's what we'll do here uh, I am going to simply take the T key and I'm gonna draw a square or a basic rectangle and I'm just gonna paste all my text in there now, obviously you can't see the text and so for now, I'm going to make the text black. There we go. And as we can see over here, I have uh, my font kerning to zero. And you can't see the font because it's super small. So I'm going to put it at 15 and 15 for now. And there we go. So this is a prayer call. They actually changed the name. So it's not going to be it's not going to be a call. It turn it Tuesdays. And actually, I'm going to go over into here and find out what they called it. Ah, OK, so. Uh, sorry for the pause. Okay, for the pause. So now I'm gonna come back here. I'm gonna hit my V key, and I'm gonna move this down. Go back to my T key, and I'm actually gonna post in what they're gonna call it. Now this is gonna be super title driven, meaning that this this flyer is gonna be because I do have a picture, but title driven means it's gonna be really the title is gonna be like probably 75, 80 percent of the flyer. So first thing I'm going to do is arrange all of these words first. And we're going to do another layer for, so I'm basically separating out the layers. So I have layer one, which is the prayer call and then power, um, prayer and prophecy. And actually I'm going to get rid of these things. I don't like that. I'm actually going to go to a, little bit of a nice design um, I don't want to call it a design feature but something that I do often I'm gonna pick a font here that's fairly thick but not too thick and I usually roll with the same fonts that I like to use this is just what I do so I'm gonna try to pick a somewhat thick font that has kind of a I want to say a sans serif some type of a, a, a straightness to it and actually before I do that let's just pick uh, do I have Helvetica on here? I do. But I'm going to pick Helvetica new, that one. Make it all caps, right? And I'm going to get rid of the space here. And I'm going to get rid of the space here. Right. So that's what I'm going to do there. And I'm going to make this bold. So it's already bold, right? I'm not digging that one either. There was another font on Instagram from one of the people I follow that um i really like the way it look and i'm gonna download it and probably people already probably already have it and i'm gonna put it on the screen so you can see it it's called cool vetica notice it has all of these different types here i'm gonna download this and i'm just gonna put it in my downloads folder for now obviously if you slow this down you can look through my workflow but hey it's not that serious i'm gonna double click on this and uh there's several fonts in here so actually, I'm going to 
before I do that, I'm going to go into my downloads folder and you can see some of this other stuff that I have. I may edit this out. I'm going to extract to Cool Medica folder. And you can do this in Photoshop. You used to have to close Photoshop out to do it, but you don't have to do it anymore. I'm going to right click on it and click install. So I'm going to install all these, right? Uh, it says I had regular. I didn't know I had it, but cool. So now I'm going to go back to my Photoshop and I'm going to change this font right here. I can, it should automatically just pop up in there. And there you go. Bam, it's there. I want the regular one. There we go. So I wanted it somewhat of a thin font there. And I want it to be right there. All right. Prayer call, I want it to be thin as well. But I want that to be spread out. And sometimes you do want to kind of stick with um, the same font families, and sometimes you don't. But I'm going to go for something a little bit, uh, I don't want to say edgy. It's not going to be edgy. But point is, I'm going to do that. My flyer is almost set up, believe it or not. So the pursuit, now this has to be, can be epic. I don't want to say it has to be epic, but I mean, it just depends. So power prayer prophetic. Okay, so I don't need this down here because it's already there at the top. And I'm so actually this is freeing up the space because I do have to add a picture in here. So this is what I want that I want this prayer call to be, you know, a little smaller, but kind of spread out like super deep. And I want this pursuit to be super. I actually want the pursuit to be super thick. Um, I just downloaded a font the other day um, called Can It Extra Bold? And I really like this font. All right. And feel free to use any of these fonts. I mean, for the most part, um, I get I get my fonts just from watching other blogs and other design tutorials and stuff like that. But for the most part, I mean. Use what makes you feel right. And I want this closer together. So I'm going to turn my font kerning into like maybe like 50. Because I need these right next to each other. And then the prayer call, I want at the bottom. And then the power of prophecy and prayer, I want down here. Their names, I'm, I'm going to juice up their names a little bit. Now this already says prayer call. So I'm going to take that off too as well. And I don't need this in parentheses. And I'm going to take off that right there. Call time, and then obviously the call-in code has got to be down here somewhere. Oh, it's not here. Let me see. Where is the call-in code? Access code, I mean. Let me just make sure it's not here down further. Okay. So it's not there further. So there's your access code. So that's almost like all of the flyer right there. And sometimes this works faster uh, if you have an idea in mind. I really didn't have an idea in mind, but... I usually try to spend about 35 to 40 minutes on each flyer to allow, and also to allow for what may be client changes. So I'm going to make this access code probably smaller. And I'm going to copy that because I like that size and I'm going to go to the front and paste it. Oops. Copy this. I don't know why I copied that 8 p.m., but that was weird. There we go. I don't know, I'm gonna put call in number. Right. And access code. And I want this to be like almost all on the page as far as the size of it. Now here's where you can experiment with your fonts. I'm already using this thick font up here, can it? So I may want to try to use that again and make it just bigger. Like that. Line height, make it a little little a little longer. I've already used this cool Vetica once, so I can go back and use it again. It doesn't hurt. And I don't have to use that the crammed version of it. I can use the condensed regular, which is nice. Make that bigger. And space it out. I'm big on font kerning, if you didn't figure it out. But I'm kind of big on that. Now, I'm going to cut this out. And then the call-in number, I'm going to make the, fonts, the font height more on that 
And I may, just for the sake of it, now that I'm looking at it, I don't like it like that. I'm going to do it like that. But I'm going to make these line up. And I, I cut something out of here. Oh, save this. I don't. I haven't used Adobe Cloud yet, so I don't know what that's going to be. But whatever. So I'm going to put this in uh, my client's folder, 2020, and just put in here, uh, prayer. Bam. So there, I saved it. So the, I don't want it to be that big. Oh, wait, let me put, I did cut out their names, so let me put their names back. Cool, cool. All right. So the and the pursuit, I'm actually going to go to my paragraph and make this left justified. Whoa. So it can be over here. So that way, if I type in here a different font or something, I could ultimately um, keep it on the left side, which is where I want it. So the is right here. I'm probably going to use that cool Vetica. Or something like it, you know, something thin like this. I'm going to italicize it, make it, you know, capitalize. I'm going to do that right there. I'm kind of not digging the pursuit. It's not thick enough for me. I have another font called Moon Git. Uh, let's see how that. Uh, it's a little bit more stretched. And then I have another font. You got to know your thick fonts, your go-to fonts for, for me. So, uh, that's good, and I may have to go to Trusty Impact. Oh, no. There's another one. Kaluna Bold, something like that. Yes, that one. I want this to, I want the pursuit to be humongous. Yes, there we go. So now it's coming together. Prayer call right here. Names, and then you can move this last letter down. And the phone numbers I'm going to... Uh, cut those out of this layer and I'm just going to paste them somewhere like right here and there you go and I'm going to uh, probably left justify those so that the smaller writings are there yep like that and I could put those on this side now because of the sizes are completely um, different as far as these are concerned I, I could cut these out the calling number and access code and paste them on their own line or I could just go up here um, and just raise them up a little bit like that and I am clicking the tool right below the the uh, font height percentage I will not sit here and lie and tell you that I know what that tool is I don't I just use it so it's probably line position or something something in Adobe made it there you go so I'm gonna do that right there time is good now their names I got to do something with and then the powerful prayer prophecy thing I want this to be like there but you'll see I want it to be probably I probably want to leave it like that as far as the size and I don't want this to be bold and I actually don't want that one as far as fonts are concerned there's B boss and there's B boss mu whatever it is I want a thinner one like that maybe a, yeah maybe something like that now I can bold that out because there, yeah, it's not as thick as, it's not as thick as, I don't want it to be like taking up a lot of room and a lot of space as far as the eye, you know, the eye, the eye test. So this is right there. I'm going to have to fix your name here. And so basically now I got to get into color schemes. Now they did give me a picture to use and I'm going to copy and paste that here in the background bam it's there now one thing you might want to do you might want to you know cut, put it on your clipboard hit control new hit create paste it adobe's new um background remover is 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 bananas like it just cuts out a lot of the work so if you click on the properties tab which is right here on your right side of the screen let me make sure you guys can see that right here on the right side of the screen it says properties or you can go uh Windows and go down to properties right there. It'll pop up right here in the quick actions. You're going to hit remove background. Let's see how this works. Wait a little bit. And I really only need the top half of them. And for me, I mean, I'm going to zoom in. That's almost there. I mean, as far if you look at it, it's very, very close. I mean, you can see right in here. You need to move some of that, but you won't see any of that anyway. I'm going to hit control alt and R to go into my refined edge. I'm going to hit smooth radius and I'm gonna smooth it out just a little bit I excuse me smart radius and move it over maybe two pixels 
Um, and then I'm going to go to smooth out just a little bit. And then your contrast, I'm going to bump it up like 3%. And I'm going to shift edge in probably like negative 4%. And that's going to be my edge. Now I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag it into the prayer. In the background, bang, and I'm already there. So, Z key, zoom in a little bit, cool, cool. Now I try to generally match colors with outfits. So, I'm going to put this in the corner. Right there. And now we need to get into some color schemes. Now they have on blue, so it's probably a safe bet to go with blue. You want to make sure they're on the bottom layer. And as you can see right here in his leg, I mean, if you wanted to get rid of this area, let me turn off the text so you can see. You could, but I don't know if I'm going to use this whole picture yet. And then actually, if you want to see how good or how bad the background removal worked, I'm going to click on a new layer and call it blue. And I'm going to fill it. And you can see right there how good or how bad. Now, obviously, when you go into some areas right here with right here, behind the head and obviously around her hair. There's ways to fix that. I mean, you can go into control alt R and click on your tool here and just oops, wrong tool. Click into your fine edge brush tool, make it a little smaller. And then you can go around here and catch that. And even if you make it smaller, you can go in here and catch that. And you can go in here and get rid of this. This is all tools already built into Adobe. And you got a little bit of gray here. You know, as far as the background, you can get rid of that. Right here, around her hair, and right up underneath here, you can get rid of that. Right there. So, yeah, you can go in and fix some of this. I'm going to click OK just because I did it. But I'm going to put a glow around them or something in the background. I just haven't figured it out yet. But... I could uh, move this down and hit the, and then Pursuit is there. I probably could move their name up. And let's do Matthew and Latasha. Let's put Nesbitt on its own line, the last name. So I'm going to, you know, crunch that right there. And this may totally not work. It may work. And obviously, I still got to play with the fonts. Uh, I need to move this down. I need to move them over. So I'm just right clicking to get to my layers. Now, this is where a prayer call has to kind of stand out. So I probably won't. And I just saw something right here. You see where her shoes are white and I kind of got rid of them. Now, there's two ways to do it. You could just go into the layer yourself, get a brush tool. And I'm using Alt and right click to make this smaller and I'm going to the left or right. That's how I'm making that bigger or smaller. I'm going to hit this as, excuse me, the D key. And that makes it white. And then I'll be able to color her shoe back in. And if you right click on this, you want to make your hardness to 100 when you're doing like stuff like shoes and stuff like that. You don't really need a uh, soft brush on that. Let me turn off this text right here so I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, for shoes or something like that, yeah. You don't need a soft brush for that. You need a hard brush. And I, I don't know if this is part of her shoe or not. Let me see. It is. So I'm going to hit X to get rid of that right there. And obviously, you, there's a way to actually go in here and do it a little faster. But for the sake of tutorial, and I've been kind of doing this for 20 years. So not that my uh, hand is the most uh, precision accurate. But for where I'm doing and where I'm at, I think I'm good for not having to go out and draw, uh, use the pen tool. So that's good right there. And you can see around his shoes, same thing. I just don't know if I'm going to use uh, their feet their feet yet. I, I, I haven't figured that out yet. So, yeah, around his shoes, I can, you know, pretty fast. And obviously, I can go back and add that. I can leave that shadow there because it's kind of natural. I can hit X to switch to, to white just to see where I'm at so I can see how much of the shoe I actually missed. And if I didn't miss too much, then I can just put that back out. So that's good for now. And since I'm here, I might as well get rid of this right here. Because, hey. Now, I just hit, I hit the W key. And I clicked on their photo. And I simply uh, selected it. 
and it's pretty close. I mean, you can you can you can definitely clean this up with a brush, make it a little less obvious. Now, in this case, I probably would do a lighter brush as far as the edge. Excuse me, I'm gonna hit X. Get back here. Yeah, make it a little bit more uh, softer instead of that hard edge. As you can see, I'm just I'm just using D or X to go back and forth between the photos. So. Then over here on his side, just, you know, excuse me, hit X to get back to the white. And all I, I'm painting on, actually painting on the layer mask. I'm not painting on the layer. So X to get this out of here. So I just fixed it. Okay. I spent a lot of extra time for that. I didn't have to do that. But anyway. <coughs> so there's a couple things I can do. If I wanted to use their entire picture, all right. So let's say I, I tilted it over just a little bit. I would have to move prayer call off to the side and I'd have to pull in some of this font kerning to maybe like 500 move it off to the side prayer prophecy I want to keep that like that and there's gonna be a, a, a some some issues with spacing as far as there's not a ton of text on here so I definitely want to make sure that uh that if I'm gonna use it this way that you know use your full body excuse me, profiles that I work on the spacing. Now, if I did this and then I made this, you know, paragraph adjustment to the left, this may work. Um, I definitely don't want to use that font. Can it, if I'm using, if I'm using a uh, uh, Kelowna up here, I definitely want to try to stick with the same fonts. I don't need this bold. It, I just need it bigger, right? And I probably could put the time like that. Oh, I'm not big on these crosses through the zero, so I'm gonna get rid of that. So let's do this. So now it's coming together. The their names. I I haven't figured out what to do with their names yet, but. I am working towards, I just hit control T y'all to resize that prayer call right there every Tuesday. Oh, that's, that's all spread out. That's another thing that should be, there we go. So you can see Photoshop does a really good job aligning that little pink line pops up. I kind of want their last name to be in cursive. I'm just kind of tired of using cursive or script, I should say. I don't know if that's the proper term. So I got a couple scripty fonts here. I guess that's not bad. If I do this and then I kind of bring their names in a little bit. kind of getting there control s for save y'all save 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 all the time and the more i look at this i need to move this information down like that and i need to and i know you're like well why is that so close like there, there's a reason that that's close and i may need to make them just a little smaller and as i stated i can put this shadow back there was a shadow that was underneath this foot i can go new layer and call it shadow I'm going to hit my B key for brush tool and I'm going to make this bigger and I'm going to make the, 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 the hardness uh, zero because I want a soft edge and I'm going to hit D to get black and I just hit a one uh, one brush stroke in the middle of the screen and I'm going to move this behind. I'm going to drop their layer behind them and all I'm going to do is hit control T and I'm going to just kind of, you know, size it down and I will I would use this over and over again that same layer and it doesn't have to be that dark I can go to my opacity and make that you know 60 and then I can hold alt and drag another one put it right there this time reshape it you're gonna try to reshape it for the size of the foot so you don't want to necessarily just drop it on there and be like oh this is great nope like right there and then I'll make another one for his foot right there and another one for his foot in the back now that's just me I didn't have to do that but hey I did it. It's over. Done with. Good. So prayer call. Now I want to do a stripe. I'm gonna hit Control Shift U and do stripe. I didn't spell it right, but you'll be all right. 
and oops oh i have this set to fix size anytime you want to highlight a a a uh, marquee but you want it to be fixed up here right here when you hit the end tool you'll see all these toolbars up here change this to normal and then that way you can just drag whatever but anytime you need it to be fixed you can hit fix and then type the size you want in there so when you select it it's exactly the way you want it so i'm gonna hit normal and i need this to be right here and i'm gonna hit new new layer let's just call this color because i don't know what color i'm gonna make it yet now there's two ways you can do this you can make your own you can essentially just pick a color you know hit hit your color tool and you know i don't know I don't know what color to pick, but right now I'm going to stick with the blues and hit that and hit alt backspace. And there's your blue, right? And then you want to put that behind or actually you want to put all your colors behind all your text now. And in order to play with getting, see if there's some colors that agree with this, I can click on the, uh, the, uh, the, oh my God, what do you call this? Layer properties, the, the layer modes. There we go. And I can just scroll through here and see if there's any color that pops up that really jumps out at me instead of just going through a whole bunch of colors. Um, none of these really jump out at me yet. Um, overlay doesn't work. Soft light doesn't work. Lighter color may work, but it just looks like the same color. So I can do that. I'm just going to pick that for now. I'm going to line this up. I'm going to make that white because I obviously want this to be different. Now the prayer prophecy and power. I'm essentially just going to take this word power and whatever this color is right here and I'm gonna make it that color there that's just for now now I could make this white like that and make this white and then it should stand out more like that also go back to the layer modes and see if one of those now that kind of sticks out color dodge so if this is gonna be I'm just rolling down here sometimes you design them on accident and it works I'm cool with color dodge. Let's roll with that color. And actually, so now I'm going to take prayer call. I'm going to hit V and right click on prayer call and try to make it this same color. Uh, it doesn't work. Well, it would work if I go back to this color and maybe make this black. Make it normal. Where did it go? Let me control. If I control, if you control click on the layer, it, it highlights the layer. So you can. Um, actually highlight the layer uh, that might work we'll figure it out here still trying to work it out the pursuit prayer call power prayer. yeah we'll, we'll roll with that I want this black square to come out a little more and I can always move them around it's not a problem save every Tuesday in January Needs to be moved up a little bit and obviously off to the to the left or the right. I mean, at this point, there's a ton of stuff you can do with this flyer. I mean, I could pull this. I can write. I can click on color, right click, select color, do an alt to pull it down. So that makes a copy of the layer. Hit shift and alt to make another another uh, copy of the layer. And click on the call-in number and make it the same. I can make it white, make it make make it stand out. That's fine for me. That looks fine to me. I don't know about anybody else, but I would make this every Tuesday in January. Now I know what a lot of churches are into and, and ministries are into putting other times here. Um, and I'm gonna look up. And you don't have to watch me do this, but. I'm actually going to look up. Let me take this off the screen. I'm going to put time zones in here. And what, uh, let me see what time is it everywhere. So up here, I know that right now it is 6 o'clock. They, they're, they're shooting for 6 a.m. Uh... Mountain Standard Time, or sorry, actually Pacific Standard Time, seven o'clock Mountain Standard Time. Uh, so normally, what I do is I don't want to say I, I don't want to say what I do. I would actually go to another layer, hit T, just make a smaller box, 
and here put you know s you know 7 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, 8 a.m. Uh, Central Time, and then 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, and just put all those. And the reason I would do that is so people who are watching or trying to attend this prayer call could. This is not necessarily a des um, a design feature. This is just some marketing I would do to kind of help out. People were wanting to attend this prayer call, weekly prayer call for, you know, January. You'd want them to know what time to tune in. Now, if the client doesn't want that, that's fine. But at least you thought about it. How's that? There you go. So there's that. There's that. Uh, still trying to figure out this name situation here at the top. Let's try to spread their name out. Right, and let's try to drop the Nesbitt underneath there. And the pursuit. Now, I try to theme my designs with what the theme of the flyer is. The pursuit, pursuit could be a race. The pursuit could be a whole lot of stuff. Um, obviously, if you click on the Pixabay plugin, which I plugged in one of my other tutorials, um, you could put race in here because I think that. Honda would be something that you would takes a while to load because it's got to load all these pictures um, and loads them into your memory and even with a lot of memory still I mean there's a whole lot of different things in here about race that you could use um, I'm thinking like something like finish line and it takes a while I'm not going to edit this out because it's taking too long so you have things like this, start, finish. Uh, let me see if there's anything grabs your eye. Nothing really grabs my eye here. Um, but what would definitely work, at least just from, is it's a prayer call, so it's gonna be on a phone. So maybe if you could find a nice picture of a cell phone that you could put in the background, and maybe not necessarily, uh, a very um, overbearing picture but maybe something subtle so if you scroll through here I'm sure there'll be a picture of a phone somewhere that you can use something like that right there but I think I already used that on another flyer so I'm not gonna use that I'm not gonna use that one try not to use the same images on on on, on, on repeat flyers or and try not to repeat images in flyer designs there's been some like there's there's one I particularly one I use of a Bible for Bible study. It's just the best image you can find, so that's why I use it. Um, other than that, try not to use um, the same image on multiple designs. I'm not seeing one I like here, people. I'm gonna keep scrolling. I would like a phone on a table, maybe a phone laying down, not like that one, but something. I know you Apple heads are really liking the iPhones and stuff like that. I'm team Android, so. And team Windows, as you can see. Knock on wood, my computer haven't locked up yet. But we had to start over. Ah, right there. Bam. So I'm going to click open a new layer. I want the original size. I'm going to download that joint. That's going to drop it in the background. Well, it's going to drop it in the, in the image. I don't know how big the image is. We'll find out here in a minute. The image is humongous. So I'm going to do control I to, yep. Image is humongous. There we go. Yep. So I'm going to scale this down to here. Probably about right there. This may work. It may not work. You'll never know. I'm going to group the uh, t text all in one layer. So I'm going to move this color strip down to the bottom. I'm going to hit the top layer, hit shift, and hit control G. And that's going to rename that layer and call it text. That's what I'm going to do. And then my shadows, I'm going to group that layer and control G and call it shadows. Uh, and there's some more text in here. I can put that in that layer. So all my stuff is kind of arranging. And I'm going to drag this all the way down to the bottom. Bam. So that's down there. Now, this doesn't look too bad. I mean, standing on the phone, I don't really want that, but whatever. So I'm going to control T. I'm going to make this smaller. At least make it the width of the flyer there move it down to about right there 
And I'm gonna play. I'm gonna play with the with the layer mode to see if I find something that works for what I'm doing. I'm thinking luminosity would work. Yeah, that's gonna work because I'm gonna end up turning it down anyway. You know, to hardly anything. I'm gonna click on this layer and hit this button right here next to the effects tab, which is basically the layer mask. I'm gonna click on the layer mask. I'm gonna hit D X. Then I'm gonna hit G. And what that's gonna do is create a black and white gradient that will go over the top. Oh, it should be black and white. My bad. If it's not black and white, click the arrow here where the gradient uh, options are. Change that to black to transparent, so that way you can copy right over that. Bam, bam. I mean, realistically, what it look like to put this at the top? Eh, it wouldn't hurt. Uh, that may not hurt. I would have to go down to the bottom of this and hit gradient as well. Yeah, that may not hurt. Who knows? Let's work. Let's roll with it for a minute. See how this rolls. Now, I'm gonna make this bottom a little brighter. There's two ways you can do it. I can create a new gradient. I'm like the gradient master. Like, I use gradients in everything. And I can pull the white up like that and then move that gradient. Where did it, where did it go? I can hit Control Shift in the left bracket key and that moves it all the way down to the bottom of that group and do it again and move it all the way down to the bottom of the layer. Then move it right above the blue and bam. Now, if I do that, that doesn't look too bad. I actually can make this text at the bottom. Uh, I actually can make this secondary stripe. Uh, I'm going to hit Control and click on it. And I'm going to hit the color picker. And I'm going to pick one of these blues up here. And let me see if I fill that in blue. There we go. So that way I can leave the text white, which is what I was going for. Now, a couple of cool design elements you can do, which I kind of started doing lately is I'm gonna hit the actual color copy and I'm gonna double it I'm gonna hit control T and hold down my shift key just to make like another line like right above it a thin line there we go it nothing I don't know it's, it isn't anything you know super spectacular but hey it adds a little element to it there we go so I'm noticing that I have this color blue in here and I don't have it anywhere else so I'm gonna hit the eyedropper key and I'm gonna hit that color blue and I'm gonna hit a new layer call it color paint and I'm gonna hit B for the brush and I'm just gonna do it right there up in the corner now I'm going to try to scroll over the color temperatures again to see if I can find something that works for me and this is I do this a lot scroll over these color temperatures just to give me some options or what I like overlay so I'm gonna hit V and I'm gonna move this, move the layer over a little bit. Now I'm gonna do a second layer, a second color layer. I'm gonna call it white glow. And I, I have a white glow in like every, I should call my designs white glow designs because that's what I do. I'm gonna go up here behind the name, hit B. I'm gonna make this smaller. This time I'm gonna hit D and X. I'm gonna do it, oh, excuse me. I'm gonna hit D, and, oops, what the heck? Okay, there we go, there we go. Sorry, there we go. So I want it to be white. I'm going to hit it over here in the middle because I actually, if you hit it right here and you move it, you see it cuts the edge off and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to hit it like right here and then I'm going to move it up here because I want to flatten it out a little bit. So I'll hold down shift and alt so it comes in a little bit and then hold out shift and alt so it comes out a little bit like that. And there we go. So that takes care of the issue with the name. I'm going to hit control S to save this. Uh, I think I'm almost done. I mean, this fly this flyer is more about people tuning into their prayer calls, so it doesn't have to be super duper fancy. It doesn't have to have a lot of effects. That that wasn't the point of this. The point. So obviously, the pursuit is the biggest part of it. Now, there's a ton of stuff you can do with 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 effects, and it's just you just gotta kind of have to play around with this. Uh, when I first started out, effects were everything. Like you had to do effects on everything because I didn't know what I was doing. So now you have to use what I call effects in moderation. Um, the dark color looks better. And me, there's these style gradients you can download. I think you can get them from, uh, what is the name of that website? There's a website you can get gradients from, and it's free. They're not, they're not, they're not cracked or anything. Uh, free Photoshop gradients. I, there's a one site that you can get everything free from. And it's, ba it's basically pr provided by uh, other art, Deviant, Deviant Art. Yeah, there it is, DeviantArt.com. That's where I got these from. So, I like the dark 
part of it. That's me. Um, the silver might work, might not work. It's just a matter of knowing what's going to work and what's not going to work. And you play through these gradients and you find something that works and you go with that. Um, I, I kind of feel like the dark gradient would work. The darker color would work. I'm not opposed to the black, but in order to do the black, I would have to put a stroke on it. Something like that. And actually, I would have to put a few strokes on it. So I probably would put uh, the the teal stroke first. It's got to be teal. Or cyan, whatever you want to call it. And then I add another stroke behind it. And you can obviously click on these and drop it down and make this stroke white. And then make that stroke bigger. All right. Now, you can obviously get rid of this second stroke and just put, a inner, you know, put that stroke on and then throw an outer glow on it. And make that outer glow white. Uh, make the uh, the uh, the size come up. Oops, let me turn down. Let me turn the size up and turn down the noise. Sorry, turn the opacity up. And you could turn the spread down a little bit and turn down the size. And you know, I'm big on glow, so I mean, me if I were gonna do something like this, uh, I'm just big on glow. I'm trying to be a little bit more corporate, so I may just go ahead and try to do this with the white. I'm almost positive the client would say, hey, it doesn't pop. It probably doesn't, but hey, you got to let them give them some input, you know, to see, you know. Most times clients will give you stuff and they just want a nice clean flyer. Sometimes they don't want to think about it too much, um, and so you just got to do your best to present them with something they can make changes to and other times they may not make changes it you know design's kind of tricky you got to figure out what works best for um what works best to get the project done so another thing i'm noticing is that you can't really see the i'm going to take that glow copy and just copy it all drag it and put it right there and i'm actually going to bring bring that glow in i don't want it to be like all that and i'm going to take this cell phone picture when you download something from Picture Bait, just make sure you change the number, the change the name, because if you don't, you're gonna have like five or six different Picture Bait pictures. It's gonna be it's a nightmare. So I'm gonna take this. I don't like that the way that font looks. That's just me. So I'm gonna come to this font and go to Cool Vetica, and I'm gonna use the, the yeah I want to use a font that agrees with it. So I'm gonna bring that down and then. Bring down the 6 p.m. and stuff like that. I'm kind of done. I might move this gradient down a little bit like that. I'm kind of finished. Yeah, I, I still think I could do some. Well, actually, um, I could do some more with Pursuit. I'm going to save this for now. Looking at this Pursuit, like what could I do? I want to keep it darker. So let me just click on it, double click on it. Go into my gradient overlay because that's probably one of the only things I can do with it. Now, gradient overlay, if you find a gradient you like, like this gradient, um, I probably could. Um, I don't know if I want to mess around with this gradient. You could make your own gradient. I don't really fool around with it. I mean, this is not looking bad right here, actually. But I kind of like, uh, kind of maybe try to agree with the color scheme. Like maybe this gradient, right? And you can edit any gradient you pick. And maybe go back to your darker color, but put that on the bottom. Just click OK and just reverse it, right? So maybe that, and I don't, I, I don't want the green. So I can pull the green out of here or the, or the lime green. I don't want that. Maybe that would work. Now, for the sake of the, the, and maybe that's not the right color. Maybe I want it more of a tealish color to agree with the flyer, that. And maybe now I do need to reverse the back. Okay, yeah, maybe do that. And for the sake of being able to read the pursuit, you can use the inner shadow. And you don't take, turn off global light because you want the inner shadow to be independent of what, um, each effect to be independent of other effects. So put that right there. So you can tell the darker you make it. You know, um, the more it'll stand out. And it just appears to be, you know, look a little bit like a bevel or emboss. I don't want it to look like a full bevel and emboss. So I'm going to pull it back just a little. I actually want it to look like an inner shadow. Right, like that. Click OK. Now, 
this is where I can go back into my globe blings. I'm big on bling, so I'm gonna hit. Yeah, see, I'm big on these bling. I, you, you, there's not too many designs you're not gonna find where I don't do this. Now, what I am gonna do differently is I'm gonna pull this in to where it looks like the light's coming from behind it. I'm gonna make a new layer and put glow two, and put it like in between the words and make it look like the glow is trying to fight through the letters which is what I'm just big on glow I'm sorry and I'll probably go over here and do another or actually I can just at this point duplicate one of these layers so I'm gonna duplicate the big one and just move it right there and do another one that bang and there we go and I'm gonna save it that's my flyer Something I always do, and that's just me, is I usually go into, after I finish the flyer, uh, I'm going to group these and call them assets. Um, just, you know, random stuff that may need to be moved. Right? Uh, this can go in there. Yeah, so nothing. So my assets are just like, you know, my colors and stuff like that. And then I can group all of this and call it background. And I learned this from buying templates online. Like, they always had their stuff grouped, and I never understood why until I started buying them. And then they always would, you know, change this to red and change this to orange. So you see, have a little bit of a understanding of what's what. So I know these are my assets, and I, I, there we go. So I, I, you, I, like, their picture's pretty good. I generally don't like to screw around with pictures, but I'm noticing it's pretty much been edited. Um, I probably would uh, right click on their picture and let's call it, uh, you know, their name. All right, right click on their picture. Obviously, convert it to smart objects. Go to camera raw filter. Converting it to smart object just allows me to apply filters on top of the image without, without messing the image up. And it's already edited. I probably would just go to texture and bring up the texture just a little bit to just make it a little bit more defined. That's about it. And you may not know, you may not can see that. I can. If you look, let me see if I can zoom in. You can see it just gets a little sharper. Just a little bit, especially like around her hair. Just gets a little sharper. Um, and then another thing that, you know, I would probably do for their image also is I probably would add a brightness, uh, actually a curves adjustment layer on top of their image. And I want to click the clipping mask so this only affects their image. You see that just affects their image. So I probably would knock the blacks down just a little bit and bring up the brightness just a tad. And that's a wrap. I mean, if I wanted to get rid of that, let's just say I wanted to get rid of that yellow tint to their picture, which is like a natural skin tone. There's nothing wrong with it. I could go to some couple of different ways. I can do photo filter. And um, I want to hit the clipping layer because I only want it to affect them and then change this to uh, a blue cooling filter. If I wanted to do that and turn down the density a little bit and you can tell right there and there's there's a whole bunch of filters already in here built in so if you scroll through these and you find one that you know may, like that magenta filter actually makes your skin pot really good I mean use that that's a wrap I think the only uh, suggestion or, or change the modifier they may have is where their name is at but other than that Another thing I may do, and I know this is getting kind of long in the tooth, is I may go on top of the entire document and add gradient map, and I pick a black to white map, and I change it to overlay. Or is it soft light? Soft light. I think it's soft light. Now, as you can tell, it kind of, you know, darkens the whole flyer, but then I just back off of the opacity. And I don't... I don't know why I do it, but it just it looks it puts a little bit of I don't know. I just saw somebody else do it on I was watching this tutorial and I thought it looked good and I get and I do it. And then you're gonna like it and there you go. So there we go. That's it. Um I don't think there's anything else that I would do. I might even push this down a little bit. Drop this right there, drop the power prayer. Now now that I'm looking at power prayer and prophecy, I probably could put a little drop shadow on it. And that was Alt, Y, and D. And put it right behind her. And widen the size would bring down the opacity. So it's just it's kind of subtle. And I'm saving it.
and that is ladies and gentlemen my tutorial for the day you guys have a great day creative studios oh let me switch back over to my daily work if you need graphic design or tutorials you can uh, look us up online at creativestudios.com and or you can call me at 623-252-1771 or you can text our new business line at 623-226-7017 they have great offers some features and uh, we'd love to help you pursue what you're doing. So thank you for watching. You have a great day and goodbye.